Hey y'all, it's Mimsy here. If you're thinking about a pleated lampshade, this video is for you. I promise this method is the easiest method for making a pleated lampshade. Not only easy, but it is also the cleanest or neatest. So let's get started. So this is the lampshade that I'm gonna be covering. It's actually a hanging fixture and it hangs over my dining room table. This is the fabric that I'm gonna use. I bought this fabric at a thrift store a number of years ago. It is a vintage chintz, and I have loved this fabric for a long time. And I've had it in my stash, it's just been stacked over on my fabric shelf for some time. And I take it out once in a while and I think, hmm, what can I do with this? I've laid it on my dining room table. I think I have used it actually on my dining room table as a tablecloth, but it's just not that big. I've only got, is this a yard? Let me see what I've got. I've got a yard and a half. So it's not enough to really do a whole lot with, but I think it's gonna be the perfect size for this lampshade. I absolutely love this fabric. I'm hesitant to do the lampshade with it because it's so so much pattern and so much color. And the color works really well with my rug that's underneath my dining room table. But I do fear a little bit that all this color, then I'm gonna have to, I've been wanting to change my draperies in that room. And I do fear that this might make it difficult for me to match up, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I love it. And generally when you love a fabric or a piece, it will typically work out with the rest of the pieces in your home. So let's do it. So the first thing we have have to do. I'm going to go ahead and fold my fabric in half so it makes it easy for me to cut this. And as you can see, this was not cut square, which is typical. So I'll start by cutting that off. So I'm lining up the edge of my fabric with one of those lines and I will cut this so that it's nice and square. So this project will be made much faster if you have a rotary cutter, rotary cutting mat, and your metal ruler. If not, that's okay. You could just use a ruler, mark this off with chalk or a pencil, and cut it with scissors. Totally fine. It's just faster with the rotary cutter. One more thing, um, this tutorial is completely no sew. So uh, if you don't have a sewing machine and you don't know how to sew, this is also the video for you. Okay, so I've got my fabric laid out and I folded it in half because I want to be able to cut across here. If it was all open, my ruler is not 54 inches wide, so it would make it difficult to cut. So I need to measure my lampshade. I've got 10 inches, so I wanna give myself, I'm gonna give myself a, an inch on the top and an inch on the bottom. So I'm gonna cut my strips to 12 inches, but actually, you know what? I should probably measure my fabric and make sure I've got enough. So I've got one, two, three, four. Yep, that should be enough. So I've got four widths or four sections to get around my lampshade and that should be plenty. So the beauty of this is a lot of the tutorials that you see on YouTube have you pleating this and gluing the pleats like this all the way around the lamp and you have to carefully make sure that you get the top just the right and then spread it out a little bit at the bottom. And a lot of the ones that I've seen, they end up looking really messy because they're not evenly spaced. And I'm not a big fan of that. I mean, I guess if you were doing like a bunch of these and you're on your like fifth or 10th shade, eventually it would turn out really beautiful. But because a lot of them are one off, they're not very neat and tidy looking and I'm not a big fan of that. It's easier to control the spacing with this method. So essentially what we're gonna do is because I want my fabric to run this way on my shade, I'm going to cut my pleats or I'm gonna cut my sections across 12 inches across like this. I'm gonna line up my fabric across the bottom of my, and I will cut this 12 inches. And we're only going um, an inch above and below. We're not gonna wrap the fabric over the top or the bottom. We're just gonna cut it off evenly all the way around, but not wrap it. So there's one. The next step is to cut this into strips. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up my selvage edges here and I'm gonna take off the selvage. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this fabric into two inch strips. Down, my ruler is two inches.
And as you're cutting, just make sure that your pattern is still running, you're still parallel. So your pattern is running parallel to your cuts. If your pattern starts going askew, um, it, it's possible it might look askew on your lampshade. So just pay attention to that. And I could have actually done that faster and done like two or three layers. I, I should have done that. So for the rest of those, I'll, I'll layer them up so that I have more strips getting cut at once. Okay, so then after all the strips are cut, which I still need to cut a few more, but after all the strips are cut, we're gonna take these to the ironing board and press them. Okay, so I've got my ironing pad set out on my table. If you don't have one of these ironing pads, they're really convenient because you can set it anywhere and iron on anything. And you can, I, I have mine, I bought mine by the yard, so I'm able to just unroll it and cover my whole table with it and do drapes with it. But you can buy them smaller, but it's really convenient. I, I've got my strips of fabric here and I'm ironing them. You only have to iron over one side. So I'm ironing it basically to the halfway mark. I'm folding the fabric to the middle basically so that this piece here, that's the front of the fabric, and this piece is the same width. So that's how I'm doing all of my folds like that. And it doesn't have to be exact. Close is good. So you definitely don't need to measure it or anything. Just eyeball it, stack them up. I've got my ironed strips all set aside in a pile here and I'm heating up my glue gun. And I'm gonna start right on this seam so that I know that I'm starting my first row straight with the seam. You're gonna work all in one direction because we've got the folded side here and that's gonna be the side that shows. So I will put the folded side right on that seam, glue it down, and then the next one will go on top of that so that the folded side of this one shows. And the way I'm gonna do it is glue around the whole lampshade, just the top, not top, then bottom. Then I'll come back and do all the bottom. That way, if I need to adjust a little bit this way or that way, I can do that without much trouble. All right, and I also have my lampshade sitting up on something so the bottom is lifted up off my table. That way my strips can hang freely and I know they are hanging down the proper direction. And so this is why we didn't have to fold this side because the next strip's gonna go right over the top of that and cover that side. So I'm gonna put a dot of glue on top of the fabric and this way I can hold my fabric down and I know if it needs to be adjusted left or right. And I'm just eyeballing the distance to try to keep this distance here the same as this one and I'll do that all the way across. I think it's actually kind of pretty when it's just like free flowing on the bottom, but I won't leave it that way. We'll cut it. I took the lamp off of that bottle and put it on this tall vase, which works way better. So even better than that would probably just be having the lamp sitting here. But since mine's hanging from the ceiling, I can't do that. But And one thing I'll say about this is if you have a really big lampshade, you may want to cut your strips a little bit wider so there's less pleats, depending upon how you want it to look. Or if you have a large pattern and you want more of the pattern to show, you might want to cut these strips to be three inches so that you have more pattern showing. Personal preference, but just some things to think about. And now I'm at the back end, so I will kind of lift up this piece. We'll glue there. And... This one gets tucked in under that. There we go. So now I can go around the bottom and it's getting pretty late. So I may not, I may pick this up tomorrow. Okay, so I've got all of the strips of fabric glued on all the way around the top and now I'll start gluing down the bottom. I'll start back at the beginning where the seam is right here. And I'm just kind of pulling it down so that it's nice and taut. You can adjust it to the left or to the right so that you make sure that you're, you don't have any gaps and this piece is nice and straight down. 
So I've got this much left. So I'm just kind of, I'm kind of like dry fitting it to make sure that from where I've got here back over to the beginning, I'm not gonna have any gaps and all my lampshade will be covered and it looks good. So that's all glued down. Now I need to cut it all off. And I found with the tiny lampshade that I did in my kitchen, that the easiest way to cut this off is looking down at it like. So you're gonna need a very sharp pair of scissors. We're just going to cut it right at the edge. Pop's done, now flip it over. Do the same thing on the bottom. All right, there she is all trimmed up, looking beautiful. And the last step is to put the trim along the top and bottom edge. So you see how nice and neat that is? It's very uniform, very neat. You cannot see up in there. As you can see, it's very closed. You can't see in there. There's no reason to put any glue. So I cut more two inch strips. This is the bit that's gonna go around the top and the bottom of the shade. I have I did have to sew together us two strips because it wasn't long enough to get around there. You could avoid that by either gluing together the two strips or you could just go ahead and use the short pieces and butt them up on the shade. You could even hand sew that if you don't have a sewing machine. Anyway, I've got my one long two inch strip and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fold this over so that we can apply it to the top. Let me show you how I'm gonna do that. Okay, so now you pull it through and it'll automatically fold the fabric over on itself and then you just iron that. I'll pull this, iron, pull, and iron. All right, now, once it's all this, see it's folded over on itself. The next thing that we're gonna do is fold it in half. And this part, the trimming at the top and the bottom of the lampshade, you could absolutely do this with a ribbon or a gimp cord or a contrasting fabric. It doesn't have to be made out of the same fabric. And now I'm just gonna run a bead of glue in here to hold this together and then glue it on to the lampshade. I'm gonna start by just gluing down one little piece of the edge here so that I'll have a finished edge. And I'm gonna start at the seam again. I think I'm gonna go left to right on this one. And what I'm doing is I'm gluing it just a tiny bit above the fabric. And I'm also gluing the open edge at the top with the closed edge at the bottom because it'll just look better when you're sitting at the table. You won't see that edge. So I'm putting my glue right at the top edge because it wants to run down the edge, so. And I'm working in about an eight inch span at a time. It would be way easier if it was just on the lamp base, but mine's a chandelier, so I can't do that. But if you have your lamp base, just work with it right on your lamp. Okay, so we're back to the beginning here. I'm gonna cut it off just a little bit overlapping so that I can fold it. And I'm gonna just butt join them together. Put some glue right inside and then go ahead and glue right across the top. You see that join right there? There's the join, you just barely see it. That is how it looks across the top. So now I will do the same process on the bottom. Okay, and the only tip I have for you when gluing on the bottom cording is to glue it with the open side where you sandwiched it together like the opening of the hot dog bun up so that when you're looking up into the lampshade, like for me, this is my dining room table. So when I'm looking up into the lampshade, I see this closed finish edge along here. Small detail, but those details make a difference when you're looking at something all the time. And then again, just let it hang over the edge just slightly so that 
it covers the raw edge of this fabric. And I am kind of pulling it a little bit, stretching it just a hair. When it's pulled and nice and straight, it makes, makes it beautiful. If you need to sew together strips in order to make this happen, I do have a separate video for making welt cord, and I'll link that right here in the cards. I think it's super cute. I love it. I'm still unsure about the fabric because I don't know if it really goes with that piece and uh, we'll see how it is to match like tablecloths to it and stuff, but we'll see. I love it on its own. I could potentially change this shade out and use it somewhere else and just put a plain shade here if I needed to in the future, but if you're looking to add a little bit of cottage style to your decor, this is a super easy project to do. Okay, just a quick side note or postscript on this video because I know I do give a lot of detail and what seems like inconsequential tips on things, but the thing about it is, is we want it, we want to DIY these things, but we don't want it to look DIY, right? Isn't that the whole idea is for all of our projects to look like custom pieces, like we paid a lot of money and purchased this at a high-end boutique, or we paid somebody a lot of money to custom make it for us. So that's why I give all the details because we want our pieces to look high-end and custom, not like a DIY piece. So if you are in agreement with me and you think the details matter, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right here and potentially follow me on Instagram. I'm at Mimsy and Co. Thanks for watching y'all. See you on the next one.